Praise the Lord, everyone. I hope you are all fine. This is Pastor Sandra Bangana here with a Broken and Mended series. Um, I'm so blessed and humbled to be speaking to you. You know, um, the Broken and Mended series, if you're listening in for the very first time, it's a program that I've been running, I think, for the past two or three years in my ministry, the Road to Redemption Ministries. And it speaks to singles, single parents, and the marrieds. I've been on leave the whole of December, and I'm happy to be back, refreshed with more content for you. And I hope to take you down the journey of singlehood, of single parenting, and of marriage this year. And all I ask of you is to listen in ardently. Your life shall not remain the same. Don't forget to share, subscribe for others to see this great message. And today, I'm here to speak to singles. I normally run this program consecutively. If today I'm speaking to singles, next Tuesday I'll be speaking to the married, and then the other Tuesday to the single parents. So I keep running in such a manner. So today I'm addressing the singles. And my topic today is what to avoid this year while dating. We are getting, we've walked into a new year and um, you should have goals. You should reflect on your life, what you want and what you don't want setting resolutions so as a single person i believe one of the resolutions you should make this year is what to avoid while dating so today i'm here to talk about that what are some of the things you should avoid while dating today i'm speaking about one of them and that is avoiding people that are double-minded people that are double-minded people that are double-minded are people that are indecisive do you know you can be in a relationship with someone for three years and they're undecisive. What do I mean by undecisive? Undecisive whether they should marry you or not, or whether they should settle with you or not, in case you're a man, in case you're a woman, whether they should marry you or not. You know, and over time in my counseling sessions, I've gotten a chance to speak to people and I see how their entire youth is wasted just because of people that are double minded. You know, so I, I think you should resolve around this and make a decision and say 2024, I'm not going to deal with anybody that is undecisive. If you already have these people in your lives, you need to let go. If you see them coming your way, you need to cut them short before they get deeper. The problem singles have is when someone comes into their lives, they don't take time to study and say, is this the woman I want for me or is this the man that I want for me? They just keep going. They're like, let's go and see what happens. And then before you know it, you've wasted two years. There is someone listening in. Last year, you just broke up with someone that maybe you were dating for four years. Four years is a very big time to be wasted, okay? Love yourself so much that you avoid people that waste your time because every year that goes is not gotten back, you see? And every year you, you tend to old age. So don't let people waste your time you carry the vote for your life and nobody carries that vote for you praise the lord now people have a problem with saying no to double-minded people someone double-minded is indecisive they're in a relationship with you they, as if they're communicating then they quit as if they're trying to be serious then they withdraw you know you don't get them and when you sit down to ask them what's going on they're like nothing or i don't know or i'm thinking about it or give me time you know, how much time does someone need to decide about you, okay? Because you're not a puzzle that you need to be found a certain way. You're an open book. You know, when you're picking someone for marriage, it's always there and then, the first time you meet them, the first month. It's, you can always know whether I can end up with this person or not. So, I think people should awaken up, men and women should awaken up to the spirit of double-mindedness because... It affects you a lot at the end of the day. And for someone that finds it hard to let go for, to let go of someone that is double-minded, you need to think again, okay? Let's go together to the book of James chapter 1, verse 7 to 8. And I'm going to read from the King James Version. The Bible says, For let no man, sorry, for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Who? The man that doesn't have faith. When you read from verse Six, the Bible says, but let him ask in faith nothing wavering, for he that wavereth in is like a wave of the sea driven with a wind. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything good of the Lord. The Bible says, those people that don't have faith, 
should not expect anything from the Lord. And then verse 8 is key. It says, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. The reason why God is saying if you're double-minded, you can't deal with you. It's because you're unstable in all your ways. A double-minded man, this is the Bible saying, is unstable in all his ways. So you have someone double-minded. Don't expect them to stabilize. Let me tell you guys something. If you go in for someone that is double-minded, even when they tend to say, I want to marry you eventually, these are the people you see at the end of the day quitting the marriage, okay? Uh, getting uh, to stand you up at the altar, okay? Why? Because from day one, it was evident they were double-minded. So the Bible is saying, these people are unstable. When they say they are unstable, it means anytime they can abandon you, any day they can abandon you when you're pregnant, okay? They can make you pregnant and abandon you at three months of pregnancy or the moment you tell them I'm pregnant. They can abandon you at the altar on the day of your wedding. They can abandon you in marriage anytime. Why? Because the character of people that are double-minded is they are unstable. Now, this is God telling you. So imagine you have someone double-minded and you're there trying to say, ah, let me believe that they will get better. No, at times God shows us these people just for us to receive these indicators and run away for our lives, okay? These people are unstable in all their ways, in all their ways. So they can't commit to you, okay? They can't. The moment you see someone is double-minded, please quit that relationship because they are unstable any time. They can tell you, I am done. They can tell you, you know what? I don't feel love for you anymore. I feel I'm growing out of love. What is that? They were double-minded. So their emotions are unstable. Their commitment is unstable. Their love for you is unstable. Would you want to end up with such a person? Imagine God himself is saying he's not dealing with them because they're double-minded. So if God himself, the creator of the entire universe, is willing to let go of double-minded people until they pursue him a particular way in faith, how about you? Praise Jesus. When you look with me to the book of Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38, it says, Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draws back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. If you're moving a journey with God and you draw back, he has no pleasure in you. This is the New Testament. Okay? Now, I'm trying to show you how principled God is. If the creator of the universe is this principled, what about you? Why do you always give excuses for people who are double-minded? You know, maybe they are going through something, or maybe I should give them time. Maybe you know, they are wasting your time. But God is trying to make it clear with them. He's telling them, look here, if you draw back, uh -uh, I'm not with you. I want to talk about drawing back. They are probably dead for six months, and then they're like, give me time. Then they disappear for one year. And then they're like, I am back. Those are double-minded people. You know, most times you think, oh, maybe he thought it, and he thought, or she thought, I'm the one. Before you know it, again they go, again they come back. When I was single and dating, before getting married. I used to have these kinds of people, you know, they date you for six months, they dump you, they disappear for one year, and after one year, they come back to you. They wasted my time. You see that? There's someone who wasted six and a half years of my youth, and it ended up in nothing, okay? So, learn to see these indicators. This year, as you're starting the year, as you're putting resolutions for 2024, one of the things, if you're a single person, you should really look at very seriously, is to get rid of double-minded people. I like what First Kings say. Elijah was speaking to the people in those times. In First Kings chapter 18, verse 21, the Bible says, And Elijah came to all the people and said, How long will you falter between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if, but if Baal, if Baal, then follow Baal. You know? He's telling them, for how long will you falter between two opinions? You see? So someone has to be decisive about you. Do they want you or not? Are you the one for them or not? That should be very clear as you're starting this, as you're continuing in a relationship this year or as you're starting a relationship this year. Let me not falter between two opinions. I'm not sure. Give me time. Let me think about it. Um, you see, I feel like this. I dreamt this. I, no, no, no. For how long will they falter between two opinions? That's the thing God was saying. If you have faith, you, if you, you either have faith in him or you don't. Okay? So he's saying he doesn't want double-minded people. He wants someone that has faith. Not, there's nothing like in between. Oh, I have faith or I don't. No, you either have faith or you don't have. So if you don't have faith, he's like, 
he can't deal with you because you're unstable with him. God himself is, is telling, is saying this. So how about you? Okay? So you either choose God or no God. There's nothing like you're in between. So these people should either choose whether they are committing or not. And when they, when, they, when they illustrate to you what they are trying to say, pick it and move on. Some people find it hard to move on. You're finding it hard to move on. But let me tell you something. If you're finding it hard to move on, you're hurting yourself eventually. Okay? When you're leaving that relationship, you're going, what is going to pain you most is not even what they've done to you. It's going to be the time you have wasted with them. Why? Because time never comes back. That's all I had to share with you today. It's kind of... Um, a reminder, please, as you're starting to date this year or as you're already in a relationship this year, please ascertain these people, are they double-minded or not? And make the decision according to the will of God. Praise Jesus. You cannot tell me you have a grace above that of God. If God is gracious and is the same God that is saying, if you're double-minded, he can't deal with you. And then for you, you're, 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 you're sustaining someone that is double-minded. You're going to hurt yourself. And in the end of it all, you're going to tell God, but God, why? Simply because you don't know the truth. The Bible says you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. I'm so glad to speak to you today. Thank you for listening in. I hope you were blessed. This is Pastor Sandra Bangana from the Road to Redemption Ministries. In case you want to listen or to follow ardently the things I teach about in the ministry, you can come on our social media platforms, Facebook, the Road to Redemption Ministries with Pastor Sandra Bangana. Instagram, Road Redemption 2, and YouTube, the Road Redemption Ministries. I also have a blog called My Home, My Marriage Diaries, where I speak about homemaking. The Bible tells us to, to teach the young ones, you know, the things we've learned as, as elderly women. So I believe there is a lot about homemaking, marriage, parenting, you know, engineering that I'm teaching the world through my blog. So in case you want to follow my blog, uh, TikTok is Pastor Sandra Bangana. Instagram, Pastor Sandra Bangana. YouTube, Pastor Sandra Bangana. So if you also want to know life, my life off the power pit, how I run my home, how I parent, you know, how I run my marriage, how I organize my home, following that blog will help you a lot. You know, much as we are believers, we should also be uh, the light of the world. So that's what the blog is all about, being the light of the world, sharing some of the gifts God has given me as a wife, as a mother, and as Sandra to the world. Be blessed. I love you. See you next time. Don't forget to subscribe, share, for someone to be blessed out there. Love you.